one of the Jewish holiday, holy days. Inside the city, near the sheep gate, was a pool of Bethsaida, with twelve covered pouches. Crowds of sick, sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the pouches. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been there, been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool, into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets my way, gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But this miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish elders objected. They said to the man who was cured, he can't walk on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. But he replied, the man who healed me told me, pick up my mat and walk. Who said such a thing as that? They demanded. The man didn't know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. For afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and told him, now that you're well, so stop sinning, or something even worse may happen to you. And the man went and told the Jewish leaders where it was Jesus who healed him. I like that clip. I don't know if, how many of you have heard of The Chosen, the new... I like that clip a lot because it illustrates the desperation. And the question Jesus asks him is, do you want to be well? And every day, Jesus is asking us a question. Do you want to be free from this? Do you want to be delivered? And as believers and as human beings, we always give excuses. The first thing the man says, like, I don't have anyone to throw me to the pool. And just said, that's not what I asked you. We always give excuses. You go back to Genesis. Moses, go to Pharaoh. What did Moses say? Oh, I, I'm not a good talker. I can't talk. I don't look good. I can't walk straight. Excuses. Adam, where's your wife? The woman you gave me, an excuse. Today's topic is no more excuses. God doesn't want excuses. Why you can't? Why you don't want to do this? The question Jesus asked was, do you want to be healed? I'm not asking about what other people say. I'm not asking by your family's opinion. I'm not asking by your friend's opinion. I'm asking you. Do you want to be free? The key word in, in that chapter was laying for 38 years. Imagine that. You can't use your legs for 38 years. You're in a wheelchair. And you're dependent on other people for 38 years. Not one year, not two years, oh, I'll just get surgery, I'll be able to walk again. Nothing. If you are dependent on the kindness of others. If someone's in a bad mood that day, they're not carrying you to the pool. Oh, I'm busy, I can't take you today. Can you help me? Oh, no, no, I have, I have family emergency. Can you find somebody else? 38 years. But this is the key. It was his appointed time. That day, he did not know he was about to encounter Jesus. So you might 
be struggling with something for so long and you're like, God, when will I be free from this? When will I be delivered? I keep praying. I keep fasting. I'm still struggling. That's an appointed time. Now's his time. Abraham, I prayed for a child. God, I'm 90 something. I'm about to I'm about to die. When is this happening? That's an appointed time. Don't rush God. Joseph had a dream at 17. That dream did not come true until he was in his 30s. We talked about Jesus. Between Malachi and Matthew, 400 years of silence. No prophets, no message, just silence. It wasn't the appointed time. So, and you have to realize something with Jesus. Jesus moves by the Spirit. It doesn't go there by, I just feel like moving. It was his appointed time. Amen. And Jesus knew it was the Sabbath. Jesus, Jesus is not stupid. He knew it was the Sabbath. Yeah. It was intentional. Yeah. He doesn't do things by mistake. It was an accident. Oh, I didn't know it was a Sabbath. He knew. Right? You can't tell, oh, Jesus, you didn't know it was a Sabbath. It's like, I know it was a Sabbath. I, I deliberately chose to do it on the Sabbath. And this is the key. When God is dealing with you, when it's your time, he will break the rules for you. He will break he will be protocols for you. Amen? In Jewish tradition, it is very true what the Pharisees said. You do not work on the, on the Sabbath. They were correct. But according to the law, if you go to the Vatican's Deuteronomy, according to the law, you don't walk on, on the Sabbath. And as a Jew, you definitely do not walk. <laughs> The Romans could do that thing, the Greeks could do that thing, but Jews do not work on Sabbath. Regardless of what the Romans were doing, you as a Jew, you do not work on the Sabbath. But because it was his appointed time, Jesus broke protocol for him. Amen? Amen. When is your time? God will break the rules for you, who will break the rules of Biology, he will break the rules of science, he will break the rules for, of promotion for you. No one else, get, it's not your time to get promoted, but when it's your time, he'll, you will skip the line and he'll, he'll promote you. No one else has done it, but for you, I'll do it. I'll make an exception for you. And that's what Jesus did for him. When it's your time, God will break protocol for you. Because the normal rule is no one gets, you don't do it on the Sabbath. And you see through our scripture, Jesus broke protocol for other people. In other, in other words, when your time arrives, he will break the rules for you. Amen? Amen. I hope you're encouraged. That. Yes, everyone else is waiting for promotion. It's not your turn. Wait in line. But for you, you will skip the line when it's your time. That's what Jesus did for him. If you look at the clip, everyone else, he didn't heal everybody else. He came to him. You could say, well, Jesus, you healed him. That's another man there. You could heal this one, heal this one. Jesus is not a Father Christmas. God is not Father Christmas. He doesn't go by your timing. Just because you want it doesn't mean he's going to do it. He's not Father Christmas. Everyone has their own timing and their own set appointed time. 
and some will not get healed. Right? Some people will not get healed. Some will get healed, some will not get get healed. There were people in Jesus' time that were healed, and there were some people, even during that time, that were never healed. They never met Jesus, so they stayed blind, they stayed lame, and stayed in leprosy. But, when it's your time, if God needs to move the mountains and break protocol for you, he'll break the protocol for you. Amen? Amen? And this is, this is key. This is key with God. God waits till you get to the end of your human ability. When you get to the end of yourself and say, God, I've tried everything. I've run out of options. I need you. That's when he steps in. As long as you're still depending on this person, I can call this person. I can call this person. It's like you're not ready yet. Guess what happened with this guy? 38 years. He, he, he came to the end of it. It's like, I have lost hope. No one can help me. I've tried everything. I've tried to crawl. I've begged. People stamp them. I've come to the end of it. Once you come to the end of yourself, I said, God, I've tried all my human ability. I need you. That's where he steps in. As long as you're still depending on man as your primary source, you have a problem. Having said that, though, it's not that God cannot use man to bless you. The issue is when you're depending on man and not God. You see the difference? He can use man to bless you, but you depend on God and he will choose which man will bless you. He will choose who, which vessel he wants to use to bless you. But if you look through scripture, every time man tries to do it himself, we mess it up. Throughout human history, every time man tries to help God, let me assist him, we always mess it up. True or false? Abraham. You're going to have a child. It's taking too long. <laughs> it's taking too long. Well, God said I'll have a child. Well, let me, let me assist him. And that's the, that's the situation we're in till today. The consequences. There are always consequences when you try to out maneuver God. Amen? Amen? The consequences. But let's go back to our friend here. He says, For I have no one to put me in the pool. When the water bubbles up, someone else gets there ahead of me. Isn't that some of our story? I've tried. It's like every time I try, someone is always ahead of me. I try to go this way, this way is blocked. I, I go, this way, go for this interview, this one's closed. Oh, thank you, we, we liked your interview, but we are going with somebody else. Right? You, you, you get so close, like, oh, I'm at the pool, I'm about to get it. Yeah, I'm right there at the pool, I'm, it's about to bubble, so I'm, I'm, I'm about to get it. Yeah, thank you, we, we like your interview, but yeah, we, we're going with someone more qualified, you're, you're too old, you're too experienced. Right? We hear that a lot. It's like, oh, you're so close. You're, you are the pole. You're about to jump in. But 
Jesus said, that's not what I asked you. That was not my question. My question was, do you want to be healed? Now the question God is asking each of us is, whatever you're struggling with, do you want to be free? No more excuses. Are you desperate or not? Do you want to be free? Now, the woman with the issue of blood, she had the same thing. Except just didn't ask her the question. If you, are you desperate or not to push through the crowd and say, I want Jesus? At least in her case, he pushed. Just didn't ask her. This one, he came to him and said, do you want to be free? Now, as believers, there are many things we struggle with. We'll be lying that to say we're all perfect. We don't, we don't struggle with certain things. We don't have our days where we're hurting, we're in pain, we're struggling. The question just is asking, and I was always asked, do you want to be free? It's not, he doesn't need your excuses. He knows you. He made, he made you. He doesn't need the excuse. I don't have the talent. I'm not a great speaker. I'm too young. I'm inexperienced. I'm a woman. It's only for men. I have children. Excuses, 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 excuses. I'm too old. I'm, I'm, a, I'm at my retirement. I'm too young. I'm too inexperienced. You need someone more qualified. The God that called you is able. The God that called Moses was very aware that the, Moses was in his 80s. It didn't take him by surprise. The God that called Abraham knew his age. So he doesn't need your excuse. He knows you're old. The God that called David knew he was a shepherd boy. It's like, I know you're a shepherd. I didn't ask for your experience. I want your heart. That's the key. He's not look at your resume. He doesn't care about your resume. He wants your heart. Because trust me, based on resume, some of us will not be qualified. Right? If we're going to go strictly on resume, some of us, the jobs we have and the blessings we get, we, sh we should not have them. Right? If we're being honest with ourselves, if we're going to go by talent, I'm not the greatest musician. I don't have the greatest voice. But still, God called me. I'm not the greatest speaker. But this is what God gave me. You use what you have. No more excuses. Because that's what Moses kept telling God. I can't talk well. I stammer. He's like, I made you. I know you stammer, but I want you. If I wanted a more eloquent, eloquent speaker, I would have found somebody. But it's you I want. Amen? Amen. For those who of you who have not seen The Chosen, um, I would I encourage you to go and watch it. It puts things in, respect, in, respect, uh, in, a, in a good view. In a human, you can... I like the interaction. Amen? Amen? But that's for a different time. But the key here is Jesus, Jesus is always asking a question. He's always asking, do you want to be free? 
That's why the Spirit of God is always speaking. Do you want to be delivered? Or are you okay where you are? Do you, want to, do you want to grow? Or are you comfortable where you are? Do you want me to stretch you? To make you who I want you to be? Or are you okay where you are? God is a, God is a gentleman. He will not force you. He will not force himself on you. But he's, he's always asking. I'm ready for where you are. That's him. He said, I'm ready when you are ready. He will not force you. That's why he keeps saying, are you ready? Are you ready to walk with me? Are you ready to cooperate with me? Are you ready to be delivered? Or do you want to keep going around and round and round and round, struggling with the same thing? You come back the same next Sunday, same thing. You come back next Sunday, same thing. It's like, do you want to be free? That's the question he's always asking. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be delivered? Or do you want to stay at the pool? It's your choice. Because you can imagine the man had a choice. He could stay, go there and keep repeating the same story. No one has pulled me to pull. You, you, you notice he did, Jesus did not heal him until he gave him a, an answer. He, kept, he just stayed, repeat, repeat this, repeated the same thing. Do you want to be healed? And until he said either a yes or a no, he was not going to be healed. And that's the same thing with us. Do you want to be delivered? It's either a yes or a no. Or you can stay around the pool. And if you're really ready after 38 years, it's your choice. Because Jesus was not going to force him to be healed. Right? Jesus is not going to force you. The other blind people, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. What do you want me to do for you? Question. Yeah, you call my name. What do you want? Be Be specific. What do you want me to do for you? Or you could go around the circle and sit there while he walks past you. Keep in mind, the man that called out to him, Jesus is going to walk past him. Remember? Jesus was already walking past him. If he didn't call out, Jesus, Jesus would not have stopped. Do you realize that? Just walks past him and he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And then he stops. He said, bring it to me. And then when he brings it to me, Jesus knows he's blind. But he says what? What do you want me to do for you? And you would think, don't you think it's obvious? I'm blind. I need to see. It's obvious. I, I can't walk. He came, he came to Paul. Do you want to be healed? I'm like, really? Can't you see? I'm you're like, really? You're asking me? Do you? <coughs> it's like God's obvious. I'm like, no. Answer my question. Do you want to be healed? And he'll stay there. If you don't answer, you'll stay there. And keep going round and round and round. God, I'm still waiting for the answer. And round. One year later, round. Two years later, round. You're still struggling with the same thing. And God's still asking, do you want to be free? Amen? Amen. I hope that encouraged you. That he's always asking the question. It's up to you to open the door. Amen? Amen. 
it's totally up to you to open the door and let him in. Amen. Or you could go round and round the circle and come back next Sunday with the same struggle. You could go around in another week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, come, at, come another Sunday. God, I'm not delivered. So you go, come to church as usual, do the routine, go back. Monday, Tuesday, keep going around. One year pass. 2025 comes around, same thing. 2026 comes around, like, and you will keep waiting. He's a gentleman who will never force you. The question is, when are you tired? And when are you desperate enough to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And until you get to that point, yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the key. No more excuses. God knows, God knows you intimately. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your strengths. He knows what he has put in you and what you are able to do. He will not give you an assignment beyond your ability. And if it is beyond your ability, he will give you the grace for it. Amen? Amen. No temptation has overcome you except that which is common to man. For God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted above what you're able. But with the temptation, he'll create a way of escape for you. Amen? Amen. He's faithful. What you think you cannot do, you'll be surprised. When God steps in, you look at yourself and say, like, is this me? Am I doing this? Moses like, I can't leave these people. And yet God says, trust me. When I walk with you, you can do all things. Amen. Joseph, this dream is never going to happen. It's too far. It's, it's a dream. It's, it, I'm a Jew. That's like me rule Egypt? Never. I, I don't want to speak Egyptian. I end up as prime minister. David, a shepherd boy. <laughs> you're a shepherd. You're going to, the, you're going to be in the palace? <laughs> Keep dreaming. Yeah, yeah, you're the youngest. Are you a shepherd? Ah, good luck with that. Keep dreaming. You're not going to the palace. And yet, he was in the palace. If God told you it, it's going to happen. Amen? Amen? If God gave you a vision, he gave you a dream, and you know it's from God, not your intuition, not your feelings, not your daydream. If God gave you and you know it's from God, it's going to happen. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, thank you dear God, that actually cares about us. That you are concerned with not just our physical healing, but you're concerned with our spiritual and mental healing. You're concerned with our well-being. You're concerned about our families. You're concerned about our, our feelings. You, you're concerned that when we're hurt and when we're crying. You see the tears that fall when no one else is there. You see the fake laughter trying to put on a front. You know us deeply even when we're trying to pretend everything is okay. And you ask us, do we want to be free? Father, as a church, we say yes. We want to be healed. We want to be free. That we have real joy and laughter and not pretend. Father, as they del deliver us from every infirmity, even the ones we're not in our way of, we ask that you heal us. Help us to remember that your time is not our timing. That we have an appointed time where you are to step in. And help us not to rush you. Help us not to assist you. Because you know what you're doing. 
And that if you gave us a vision and you promised it, you will fulfill it. Help us to be people who make no excuses. For you know us. You made us. You know our weaknesses. You know our limitations. You know our strengths. You know what you, 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 know what you created us for. And you know what we are, we are able to do. Father, I ask that you surround us with people that will assist us in your vision and what you have called us to do. All this I pray in your name. Amen.